impulses were coming to mind before when I was in meditation of just um, go on to pick up the course and you work with it for, for quite some time and the ideas still seem to be kind of gibberish at time where it seems like you're learning uh, a new language at times like it's a completely different language and one of the passages I picked up today, I think, is a little paragraph that could be really helpful to us because it's using the analogy of, of a baby coming into the world and seeing all these figures moving around and hearing all these jumbled noises <laughs> that don't seem to make a whole lot of sense. And, and Jesus is taking that and he's turning it around as an analogy and he's saying, well, that's about how you are now on the spiritual journey. You've learned all these things and, and I'm giving it to you as plain and straight and clear as you could possibly ever get it, and it seems like these sounds and these ideas aren't making a lot of sense. And it's using the whole analogy of, in a sense, that you're like a baby on the spiritual journey. He says, of all the messages you have received and failed to understand, this course alone is open to your understanding and can be understood. This is your language. Your in italics. <laughs> you do not understand it yet, only because your whole communication is like a baby's. The sounds a baby makes and what he hears are highly unreliable, meaning different things to him at different times. Neither the sounds he hears nor the sights he sees are stable yet, but what he hears and does not understand will be his native tongue through which he will communicate with those around him, and they with him. And the strange shifting ones he sees about him will become to him his comforters, and he will recognize his home and see them there with him. So it's kind of a, a neat little turnaround for, kind of encouraging. This is just, for many, a beginning on the spiritual journey, but it will get more and more understandable and comforting. Where is that, David? That's on page 437 in the text. So that's chapter 22. That's the second section, Under Your Brother's Sinlessness. Then on page 440, a few pages later, the uh, there's a statement that I bring in, I'll bring up a lot because as I've worked with the Course more and more, it's become really apparent that this is a Course in non-compromise. It's not a Course in gray areas, and, and it's important to get at the meaning of what that non-compromise is, but here's a statement that really seems to summarize that. It's the uh, second full paragraph on the page, 440, and it says, it's in the middle of the paragraph, this course will be believed entirely or not at all, for it is wholly true or wholly false, and cannot be but partially believed. And you will either escape from misery entirely or not at all. Reason will tell you that there is no middle ground where you can pause uncertainly, waiting to choose between the joy of heaven and the misery of hell. Until you choose heaven, you are in hell and misery. And again, that flies in the face of experiences in this world, because a lot of times it can seem like, hey, life is not so bad. <laughs> or life isn't as bad as it was. <laughs> it's better than it was. And, and yet this statement is clearly pointing us in the direction. We were talking about the other day with wrong mind, right mind, or black or white, all or nothing kind of a thing. But this... Uh, Statements like that can seem steep, but the more you really start to, to go into it, you can it starts to make some sense in the sense that that peace or happiness has to be an absolute. There's no such thing as, as almost perfect or you know fairly pure or things like that. It just has to, there has to be a purity of heart that we're moving towards that that is the the goal. And then a couple pages later, there's another little one. It says, The ego's whole continuance depends on its belief you cannot learn this course. Share this belief, and reason will be unable to see your errors and make way for their correction. 
for reasons see through errors, telling you what you thought was real is not. And then the last one, kind of a series of them that seems to be boom, 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 two pages later, the branching of the road, the first paragraph, on page 444, says, when you come to the place where the branch in the road is quite apparent, you cannot go ahead. You must go either one way or the other. Reminds me a little bit of the Robert Frost poem, I had to memorize the road not taken. In high school it was that whole thing of two roads diverged in the yellow wood and it goes on and on and, and he talks how glad he is he took the path that wasn't the well-worn path, but it was the path that brought him, you know, somewhere. He says, you must go either one way or the other. For now, if you go straight ahead, the way you went before you reach the branch, you will go nowhere. The whole purpose of coming this far was to decide which branch you will take now. The way you came no longer matters. It can no longer serve. No one who reaches this far can make the wrong decision, although he can delay. And there is no part of the journey that seems more hopeless and futile than standing where the road branches and not deciding on which way to go. It is but the first few steps along the right way that seem hard, for you have chosen, although you still may think you can go back and make the other choice. This is not so. <laughs> A choice made with the power of heaven to uphold it cannot be undone. Your way is decided. There will be nothing you will not be told if you acknowledge this. So I think those passages kind of paint a little bit of a picture about this course is, is that it's, it's one of those things that takes a commitment and probably if you're working with the course and you do decide that it's your path and that you really want to follow it, there's nothing more frustrating than standing at the branching of the road and delay. In other words, many people have tried to take this course and, and thought, well, I wanted to bring happiness to peace in my life, and I want to hold on to the world as I've constructed it, and be peaceful. And in one sense, that's like standing at the branching of the road, because the whole point of the Course is to, to help bring about a transformation of the mind, where you let go of the world that you've, as you've constructed it, and open your mind to, to vision in the mind. And I think these, at least for me, these passages really kind of give a little bit of a glimpse of, of that. And I don't know, is there anybody who has any experiences or questions about that, that branching of the road? It's not a branching of the road like the old way, it was kind of like, um, there was always the do's and the don'ts of spirituality, you know, depending on which church, which philosophy, which spirituality you went in, it was like, well, let's see what these people believe, you know, these are your do's, these are your don'ts, toe the party line, <laughs> you know, be a good whatever, and, and what the Course is doing is it's saying it's not a matter of do's and don'ts in form, but it is a matter of do's and don'ts in terms of thinking, or right thinking and wrong thinking. So everything we discuss, we really want to bring it back to that. There's so many controversies in this world that are just based on um, right behavior, wrong behavior, morality, ethics, and that's another delay maneuver. It can be a starting point to start talking about some of those things, but it's, it's definitely not where we want to we want to stay. Because it's just another delay maneuver. Yeah, that section's always been real meaningful to me. And when I wrote that account of my experience, that was the one that came to mind because it just seemed to relate so perfectly to how it's felt to me all along the way of coming to the branch many times. And I think that this was probably the first time that I really, really realized it 
in a much deeper way that it wasn't a branch in doing one thing versus doing another. It was a branch in coming to the branch of choosing right-mindedness versus wrong-mindedness. That's, that's the branch. And what I do is automatic. comes from choosing one or the other, but that's the choice, not not the form, you know, like you said, it's not a choice in form, it's not a choice of, well, like going to Cincinnati, when I, it wasn't about going to Cincinnati versus not going to Cincinnati, that wasn't the branch. The branch was, you know, the right-mindedness versus the wrong-mindedness. And, um, <clears throat> and, Many, you know, I mean, everything that it says in there is exactly the way I experienced it. About the first few steps along the way is what seems the most difficult, and it's only because you think you can go back and undo it. You know, it's like, well, I haven't gone that far. Maybe I can run back quick. You know, it, you know, and it's like, no. Once you've chosen, it says you have the power of heaven behind you. It can't be undone. You know, and so then it's like. That's helpful to me to read that and say, oh yes, it's just the first few steps that are difficult, remember that, you know? Because at first it's like, oh, what have I done? This is too hard. This is just too hard. I can't do this. But, um, and what were you able to do, stay back and perceive the, the doubting as wrong-minded? Yes, and yes. And to see that doubting, yes, exactly. The, that that was being wrong-minded and that, again, it was making that choice again in each moment. It's like each moment you come to that branch and each moment you make that choice. It's not, it's not like, oh, yes, I made that choice back when I went to Cincinnati. Whew. Yes, <sighs> well, I'm glad that's over. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, no, every moment, you know, it's like every moment you come to that branch. And for me, that was just, you know, a, a symbolic uh, representation of, of, a, of a time when I felt it real strongly being at that branch, but it's just, it's, it's every moment that I'm choosing right-mindedness and wrong-mindedness, and yes, when I have the doubts, it has to be wrong-mindedness. Mm -hmm. And the wrong, in the wrong-mindedness was happening as the eye is creeping in and taking over where the Holy Spirit is going to be. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that's why it's really important to go into it real carefully because as the teacher of God is goes along, the teacher of God is being called out of the world, as Jesus was saying years ago, and all of the sages and mystics and all of the traditions, the perennial wisdom have talked about. And and to be called out of the world or to be in the world but not of it, so to speak, it still seems to be there's a body walking around, but but the the mind change is enormous. And and again, as things go along, the teacher of God, you know, there are things that in the world seem like um, they're appropriate, situational appropriate behaviors. Like a lot of times, you know, to go to a funeral and to cry and grieve seems to be a situational appropriate uh, behavior. You know, the teacher of God is being called out of the world by Jesus, and Jesus at one point says, make your invulnerability manifest. In other words, you are to be a messenger of peace, of light and joy, regardless of the circumstances. You know, you aren't going to have situ situational appropriate emotions or situationally determined emotions. You are going to have Holy Spirit <laughs> determined emotions. And again, that can seem a little awkward as the teacher of God begins his his journey because it's kind of like, how should I be feeling here? Kind of, I've always felt this way when I've walked into whatever, hospitals, or when I've walked through cemeteries, or when I've gone to funerals, or when I've seen bloody accidents, or I've seen movies where it's the old chase scenes and blood and guts and everything. I've always reacted this way. Now there's a transition taking place where we're being asked to perceive the world, everything differently and change our